Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the world premiere of Amy Redford's Roost. Yes. My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the CEO here at TIFF. I want to thank you all for coming. It's been so good to see people coming back to the festival, back to movie theaters. We missed it, uh, and it's just great to see you all here. I hope you've been seeing other films at the festival, have you? Yes? Excellent. We want to thank some of the people and the partners who have made this year's festival and everything we do at TIFF possible. I want to begin with our lead and our major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa, for their continued support. And I also want to thank our supporters on the public side, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, uh, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. We would like to also thank the film sales company for providing us with this film. And we want to remind you that this film is eligible for our most important prize. That's our People's Choice Award. You vote for the People's Choice Award, so we encourage you to go online to tiff.net slash vote, and you can vote for your favorite films there. And I also want to extend a special welcome and a thank you to EY, the sponsor of tonight's screening. Welcome to all the guests of EY. And uh, on behalf of EY, Canada's chairman and CEO, Jad Shamali, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you, EY. Uh, this is the second feature by Amy Redford. Uh, she grew up in New York City, uh, studied theater arts at San Francisco State University and drama at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. Has had uh, numerous roles on the stage in television and film as an actor uh, and made her directorial debut with a film called The Guitar. If you haven't seen it, please check that out. What I really appreciated about this film that you're about to see, Roost, is that it takes what is a very contemporary dynamic between parents and children uh, as they mature and become teenagers, but also between the life within a family and the life online, and how those things can intersect in sometimes very troubling ways. And she's turned that into a very smart blend of thriller and family drama uh, with a terrific cast uh, led by Grace Van Dien. <laughs> Fans of Grace Van Dien in the house, Summer Phoenix, Kyle Gallner, Jesse Garcia, and other uh, uh, remarkable actors. A film made with real heart and with something, I think, to say to anyone who is active online, anyone who's dealing with those family dynamics that you'll soon see, and done with real intelligence, real heart. She's come to introduce the film to you this evening. Please join me in welcoming the director of Roost, Amy Redford. Hello, hi everybody. Um, the nice thing about being my age is that I understand the value of gratitude. The problem with that is if I thanked everybody I wanna thank, we would be here all night and never see the film. So um, first let me start with Cameron Bailey. Um, his letter telling us that we were coming to TIFF actually made me fall out of my bed. Um, <laughs> I love this festival. I love the thought, and yes, right? I, I just, um, I love the thought and the enthusiasm of the audiences here, and I love the city. Um, I also want to thank the programmers and the staff and the volunteers for your diligence and service in these challenging times. Um, really, I mean, it takes a lot, and I've seen one great film after another, and it's a wonderful, wonderful community to be included in. Yeah. Next come to my front lines, to my three girls, Eden, Addison, and Aria. Your constant go mom <laughs> makes all of this possible. <laughs> um, next is to those who have made the journey to be here, my mom and stepdad, I know you're out there somewhere, without whom none of this happens and to my scrappy broads from Salt Lake City, who, uh, whose true north and friendship have been life-saving. Now, on to our team. 
Um, making movies is not a solitary exercise. I first want to thank Scott Organ for trusting me with his words. It's a leap of faith, and my greatest hope is that I lived up to it. And thanks to Craig Wedron, my composer, who climbed aboard from the very beginning, and to the great and beautiful Bobby Bukowski, who wish he could be here with us tonight, who is our director of photography. Salita Hanna, my general, and everybody else's work who brought us home. Um, I have the world's greatest executive producers whose guidance and encouraged me allowed to do what I think was right for the story. In this medium, having a creative producer as your sister in arms is critical, and Eden Wormfeld and was and continues to be that person. So, um, one of the reasons that I love this producing team is that they allowed Edie Belasco, my casting director, and I to cast my very first choice of actors. They brought their A-game, their heart, their smarts, and I am so, so grateful. Please say hello to Raina Hardesty. Amazing. So lucky to have her. Jesse Garcia. Summer Phoenix. And Grace Van Dien. You all gave yourselves to me. They gave themselves to me, and, they, and you brought so much of you, and I am so grateful. Kyle Gallner can't be with us due to his shooting schedule, but he sends his love to one and all. I'd like to thank my dad, too, for seeding in me the value of storytelling as a way to broker the divide and bring us closer. My deepest wish, the, my deepest wish is that this film is a provocation, um, an invitation to examine ourselves and um, our actions and to forgive ourselves for our humanity. So thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you for coming tonight. Please join me in welcoming back to the stage the team from Roost, director Amy Redford, and the stars Summer Phoenix, Grace Van Dien, Jesse Garcia, Raina Hardesty, the screenwriter Scott Organ, producer Eden Wormfeld, and composer Craig Wedron. Welcome. Thank you all so much for this film. Um, Amy, I wanna start with you. Uh, we've all been teenagers. Some of us have teenagers in our lives. What side of this dynamic did you approach this story from, the daughter or the mother? Both. Both, okay. Yeah, both. I mean, I have realized that I don't actually understand the experience of my child. It is a very different land that she's living in and that I needed to stop talking so much. I needed to sit across the table from her and start listening. Um, and so there's a mom part of me that, you know, is terrified. And there's also a child part of me that wants to reach out and be understood. Um, so this is sort of part of that. With a story like this, so much uh, depends on the relationship between mother and daughter. Can you talk a little bit about casting uh, Summer and Grace in this movie and why those two for these roles? Um, it was the easiest thing ever. I mean, I have Summer to really thank for a lot of this project happening because she took a leap of faith and we kind of locked arms as people that love what we do but also have dedicated a lot of our lives to our children. And, you know, we decided, let's make a thing. Let's do this together. And it kind of got the machine running. And, of course, adding Grace to the team as somebody who is thoughtful and yet so open and free and, um, you know, such a talent. Uh, it was just, it, it sort of, you know, spanned out from there. And, of course, from Scott's words. It doesn't happen without the words. So. 
Um, Summer and Grace, I want to ask you about developing that dynamic. You're working with uh, this screenplay from, from Scott, which I think has a lot of what you need in there, but what else are you bringing to establish yourselves as daughter and mother in the film? I mean, I think once meeting, it was pretty easy. Summer and I built a rapport right off the bat. We just get each other, I think. Yeah, there was a comfortability and warmth in Grace. And truly, I have two sons, so it just immediately felt like the daughter I never had. You're the mom I never had. <laughs> Nice. Um, I want to ask uh, the producer and the writer about putting this project together with Amy, Eden, and Scott. Um, this is a project that I think a lot of people can relate to. It's very much based on the family dynamic. And I think it, it comes at a time we've all been, I think over the last two years, spending a lot of time with our families. Maybe discovered things about our parents and children that we didn't know, maybe didn't want to know in some cases. But in terms of putting this project together now, and what it means to, to go out to families now who have been through a lot. What, what, was, what, was, um, what was driving you in terms of making this particular project now? Thanks. Yeah, oh, I'm good? Okay. Um, I was really interested in the idea of unprocessed trauma and what happens when you don't deal with your stuff. Um, that's what really grabbed me when I read the script. Um, and I was interested in the way that technology is used and how we were going to portray that. And, um, you know, I was, I was brought on by Geraldine Dreyfus, our executive producer, who is not here tonight. Um, and she brought me to the party. And Amy and I met, and we spoke a number of times on Zoom. And, I was like, okay, are we getting married? Like, is this happening? Are we doing this? <laughs> and she went down on one knee. And <laughs> That's true. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it was thrilling. I mean, I had spent the lockdown in New York City, and um, I hadn't done a, a fiction film in a long time, and um, my family knew that I was eager to get back to fiction, and... I read this and I just was like, I want to do it. And I also get to leave town. <laughs> so that was exciting. Um, I'll let Scott talk. Yeah, I'll just add, I want, we didn't have a title for a while and we were, we were polling everyone that we could find, strangers, people on the street. Um, and something about Roost I think is kind of lovely. It's, uh, you know, it's sort of chickens coming home to roost, which I really think is uh, one of the big things in this story. It's, you can do these things, but they don't necessarily go away. And, you know, what I loved about what Amy was able and everyone was able to do with it is people are complicated and people are good and people are bad all at the same time. And people can be good and do bad things. And how do we get past that? I think it's just a, a compelling question to ask and why not do it in a film? Uh, Raina and Jesse, I want to ask you about what the environment, the atmosphere was like uh, on set. It seems like a very intimate film, but what was the vibe like? And also, what's Amy like as a director? <laughs> a dream. It was all so wonderful. Um, just saying, like what Summer and Grace have already said, it was just so warm and comfortable and creative and safe. And I just, yeah, it was an absolutely wonderful experience. Yeah. Um, it was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, we got a chance to we got a chance to play and kind of explore the characters and and the dialogue and um, it was a it was um, it was a great work environment. Something kind of like I've always been wishing for and don't always get to be able to collaborate with my with my scene partners and with with uh, and director and producers and writer. Um, it was fun. It's great. Um, I want to um, come to your questions in a moment. I have one last question for Grace. Um, Grace, many of, uh, of us would have seen you as Chrissy in season four of Stranger Things recently. Um, this feels like it is a, uh, a real star-making role in film. 
Uh, and I wonder what you think this, uh, this particular film, Roost, uh, what role it will play in your career? Where, where, do we, where do you want to go next and where do you think this will take you? Well, I think my dream has always been to make indie movies. And so this feels right on path to what my ultimate goal has always been. And I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you. Well, let's hear from you. If you've got questions for anyone up on stage here, we'd love to hear it. And if you're up in the mezzanine or the balcony, uh, you may, there we go, we got some light so we can see you a little bit better now. But please feel free to raise your hand, call out. We'll start right here. Uh, I'll just repeat the question briefly. The question is about um, uh, your having worked with a number of uh, women directors and what's your experience been like working with women as leaders uh, on a film? I think you're drawn to what you put out into the universe and I've been very lucky to work with strong, amazing, talented female directors in the industry uh, and I hope it continues. <laughs> Thank you. All right, who else? Oh, there we go. Go ahead. So my question is for Grace and one random member. They can pick whoever to answer the question. But my first one is for Grace. And I wonder how was, how was it like filming some parts? Because I heard someone say that they were filming it in COVID. And like they were starting with cast and stuff. So I just wanted to ask how was it filming in COVID? And okay. that's my first question. I'll let whoever just answer. Okay, so. <laughs> Sounds like a two-parter, but uh, the first question, very thoughtful uh, young uh, audience member, uh, wanting to know what it was like to shoot during COVID, first for Grace, and, and then she's offered it to anyone else as well. Um, I think it, it was different. I mean, everyone had to wear masks, so it was something new. We were all a bit rebellious with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, in, a, in some ways you have to be so deliberate about the times that you come together. And so when you get to taste, take that mask off and you get to sort of be in an intimate space, there's something very um, intentional about it. And so sometimes that's a positive thing because we get, we finally, we crave connection. And so when you get it, I think in a weird way, the actors bring that to the table the way that we all do. You know, you finally get to sit across the table from somebody and it's like, sort of a breath of fresh air, so. Okay, thank you. Second question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will we'll allow you a second question. Go ahead. <laughs> when you had to do two parts? Like two parts, example, when two people had to film together. Uh-huh. Like the first time? Yes. How Got it, thank you. Okay, I think I understand now, thank you. Uh, question is about when you're doing a, a scene with someone and there are two parts to it, what was it like filming those two parts? Uh, I imagine this is like a sort of a shot, reverse shot kind of thing. <laughs> Summer, why don't you take that one? Like film, filming coverage? Like going back and yeah. forth? But it's when you, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, it's, it's a chance to get to help the other person do the best scene that they could possibly do. And when you, if you're there, you know, 150% for your scene partners, they look good, you look good. Sometimes you're reacting, sometimes it's you delivering yeah. the dialogue. Okay, thank you. How's that? <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, um, I think I see someone up here. Yes, go ahead. The question is, what was it like for you as a director to touch on such difficult uh, ethical issues uh, without taking a stand one side or the other? Well, again, it goes back to Scott's words, because I think we're in this very polarized time. 
It's very easy to demonize. We can throw our grenades from behind bunkers, but really, do we understand what is the thing that, that caused somebody to behave the way that they do? And if we pump the brakes for a second on our judgment and try to hear each other, that perhaps we get to a different place. Um, it's a very interesting assignment as a director because it allows each of the people that come to play with you their dignity of the human beings that they've come to play because they have the right to their experience and their perspectives, just like so many of us have the right to our experience and our perspectives. Um, and that's sort of what we hope to do this is sort of soften the receptors of our understanding so that we can get to a better place. I want to just thank you. Um, Summer, I want to follow up on that question. Your character has a secret that we only learned partway through the film, and that's something that you as an actor have to play in some way or the other because your character knows that. She's carrying that secret through her whole relationship with her daughter. How did you approach giving that nuance to your performance? Um, I, I really think that I was doing my best to sort of allow it to unfold in real time. Um, for me, what deep shame around a secret does to honesty was really what I was exploring with Beth. And I was really guided by Amy throughout. Um, you know, I think any time I went one way, she would come in with, you paid your dues. And any time I came in on another side, she'd say, you need to fiercely protect your daughter. So I, you know, tried to strike a balance as best as I could and really play it as it came. Thank you. All right. Someone back here, go ahead. Yep. The question is about uh, your father being an actor as well, and have you had that connection to film through your family members? Uh, yeah, I would not be an actor without my dad. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be very much behind the scenes, but um, he was kind of my sole caregiver growing up, so I followed him around to different sets, and it kind of just became my life organically. Um, hi, Dad. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> All right, time for maybe one more question. Uh, well, there's a gentleman standing. The question is about uh, how you engage with your own children having made this film, and do you engage with them, particularly around social media, differently? So, um, I think that honesty is always age appropriate. And so, I strive and always have to have open and honest dialogue with my children about all of the perils and all of the positivity that life brings to our doorsteps. And I think that that has always been my way and that this certainly opened my eyes to many things um, that I I think I'm influenced by everything that I digest and come to. And so 
I've just continued in that same manner to try and bring honesty to them um, as best as I can. Did that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, almost out of time. Craig, I don't want to uh, let the, this, um, this session go without asking you about tone in the film as the composer. This is a film that, that has certainly some moments of suspense, but it's also about the emotion and the family drama uh, of it as well. Um, how did you go about finding the right tone for the music to accompany the story? Well, my studio's out in the backyard, so I would um, make sure my PJs were still clean. <laughs> And then I would walk out back and pick up a guitar and try and put myself in a kind of free fall um, that's a combination of sort of Hitchcock thriller and teen romance, like dr like drowning in a <laughs> like drowning in a like bubble bath, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and being in like a fun house where you couldn't quite tell where the bottom was or which was the true reflection. Um, and when I caught that air, I would go with that idea. And Amy, bless her heart, just kept saying, yeah, 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 go. Go more, or like mm, maybe a little left or a little right. And, um, and it was very exciting. It was actually really wonderful. And I, and I thank you, Amy. Well, thank you. Congratulations, Amy, to you, to everyone involved with Making Roost. And thank you so much for coming this evening. Please join me in thanking the team from Roost, director Amy Redford, stars Summer Phoenix, Grace Van Dien, Jesse Garcia, Raina Hardesty, the writer Scott Organ, producer Eden Wormfeld, and the composer Craig Redren. Thank you all. Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs>